March 2011. Japan faced a major nuclear crisis caused by a series of disasters, an earthquake followed by a tsunami that resulted in a nuclear accident. This film gives an update on the health issues related to the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. It addresses the emergency, protection, and long-term monitoring of the human population. The magnitude of radioactive releases led the Japanese authorities to classify the accident at Fukushima at 7 on the scale of severity of accidents. 7 is the highest ranking, just like the one received by the Chernobyl accident. In the days following the accident, the Japanese authorities ordered the evacuation of the population living within 20 kilometers of the plant and put them in a shelter 20 to 30 kilometers away from the plant. One month after the accident, the first dose maps were published, based on airborne measurements. These were doses due to radioactive fallout to which the population would be exposed if they continued to live in the area for one year. In some areas, the doses exceeded 100 millisieverts per year. The dose will continue to accumulate over time if the population remains in these areas. The dose is the amount of radiation absorbed by an exposed individual. It allows us to evaluate potential health effects. A dose is expressed in units of sieverts and millisieverts. 100 millisieverts is currently considered as a turning point value. Above this value, studies indicate that the risk of developing cancer increases with the dose received. However, below this value, no epidemiological study of humans has been able to demonstrate a link between exposure to radioactivity and increased likelihood of cancer. But a cautious approach leads to the conclusion that effects may occur even at low doses. Humans are exposed to radiation from many sources, including natural ones that are unavoidable. To give you an idea, under normal circumstances, we receive natural radioactivity 2.5 millisieverts per year in France. Medical examinations irradiating for example, 12 millisieverts for an abdominal CT scan. Artificial radioactivity generated by industrial plants in compliance with the regulations stipulating no more than 1 millisievert per year for the public and no more than 20 millisieverts per year for workers. These limits imposed on nuclear workers for normal situations to minimize the maximum discharges might be increased in the case of an accident. The Japanese government declared a value of 20 millisieverts per year as the maximum allowable for the human population. This reference value following the policy of protecting the public immediately after the accident, was passed on April 22, 2011. Within a radius of 20 kilometers around the plant, the area is off limits. The highly contaminated area northwest of the plant, beyond 20 kilometers, is a voluntary evacuation zone. In the hot spots of contamination outside of these areas, Evacuation is also recommended by the Japanese authorities. The reference value of 20 millisieverts was strongly opposed by the public in Japan, and the authorities had to set a new goal of 1 millisievert in August of 2011. But this objective can only be achieved gradually as it involves long and extensive decontamination work. Five months after the accident, large-scale projects were started in public places, especially in schools. The projects will cover all areas in which the population could be exposed 
to more than one millisievert per year. Health monitoring is necessary to protect the exposed population. It is not possible to know with certainty the exact dose that the population was exposed to, and an increased number of cancers, if any, will not be detected for several years. It takes four to five years for thyroid cancer to develop in children, 10 to 15 years for leukemia to develop among nuclear workers who were exposed. Today, we are unable to give any results concerning public health. In July 2011, a special fund of more than 80 billion yen was created to fund medical monitoring over the 2 million people who were in the Fukushima region at the time of the radioactive releases. To improve our assessment of the dose levels to which they were exposed, these 2 million people received a questionnaire to reveal their personal situations after the accident. The questionnaire, used in conjunction with the dose maps, will help scientists determine the whereabouts of individuals from March the 11th, when the earthquake occurred, until July the 11th, and thus better estimate their exposure levels. Where were you this day? Did you travel by car? On which route? How long did you stay outside, etc.? A complex memory exercise, made easier with the help of mnemonic cues, and a film featuring actors in a humoristic way. By the end of November 2011, approximately 400,000 people had replied. Apart from this survey, studies were initiated on specific populations, youth and pregnant women. 360,000 people under the age of 18 at the time of the accident will benefit from a medical checkup of the thyroid by ultrasound every two years until the age of 20 and then every five years thereafter. Since the Chernobyl accident, we know that the thyroid gland of children is particularly sensitive to radioactive iodine. Some sources of stable iodine, in syrup form, were distributed in evacuation centers as a countermeasure to block the uptake of radioactive iodine in the thyroid. However, it is unclear how many children took the syrup and how often. 20,000 women who were pregnant between the months of August 2010 and July 2011 have been followed clinically and their children will be monitored until the age of 12. Note that these results will be part of a large epidemiological study launched in 2010 on a cohort of 100,000 pregnant women to clarify the health effects of exposure to chemical and physical agents, thus radioactivity. The public health experts were well aware that such a disaster also causes post-traumatic depression. In this country, known for its strong connection to the environment and its great concern for hygiene, the anguish of living in a polluted environment, the fear of contaminated food for their children, and loss of confidence in the authorities can affect mental health. Psychological support is indispensable, but clear answers to questions about the reality of contamination will also help to overcome this traumatic event. From this perspective, the Japanese equip themselves with measuring instruments and share the results. Tens of thousands of dosimeters have been distributed to school children. Tens of thousands of employees worked on the Fukushima nuclear plant from March the 11th to December 31st, 2011. Their exposure limit, which is 20 millisieverts per year in normal conditions, was raised to 100 millisieverts during the emergency with an authorized overrun of 100 to 250 millisieverts from March to August of 2011. For monitoring, 
The exposure from external radiation is directly measured by dosimeters, small detection instruments worn on the worker's clothes. The dose received from internal contamination due to breathing contaminated air or eating contaminated food is calculated from measurements made of radiation being admitted from the body and by analyzing the radioactivity in urine. On some 20,000 workers for whom dosimetry evaluation results were provided by the operator TEPCO, about 170 were exposed to a dose above 100 millisieverts at the end of January 2012, and six of them received a dose above 250 millisieverts with a maximum at 680 millisieverts. At first sight, there was no acute radiation syndrome observed in the weeks following the accident, as was the case for the first rescue workers during the Chernobyl accident. These figures are to be taken with great caution because of severe degradations due to the tsunami. Different testimonials have indicated a lack of personal dosimeters and protective masks in the very first days following the accident, and the operator TEPCO took weeks to carry out all the necessary whole body countings. Regular medical checkups are now implemented by the Japanese authorities and will cover not only the employees of the operator TEPCO and the subcontractors, but also other categories of personnel who have been asked to work in or near the site, such as firefighters, police and security officers, or civilian government employees.